Welcome back to another Tech Debt Repair video. In today's edition, we'll be working on the iPad 9th generation. So for this video, we will show the step-by-step -step tutorial guide on how to replace a cracked digitizer such as this one. Um, this unit actually comes with like a dented housing. So there are many ways to accomplish this type of repair without causing too much damage. Uh, the first thing I recommend to use in in contrast to isopropyl alcohol for this type of repair is a frame glue remover. They seem to be very more effective at removing the digitizer and because those iPads usually have like very strong adhesive. So I'd recommend using this as the first step. Then a heat mat where you would need a temperature between anywhere 75 degrees to like 80. And because there is a lot of um, damage for this iPad. It's recommended that you like actually work on uh, extracting the screen while uh, the mat is still heating, which would greatly help on the process for extracting the screen without damaging the Touch ID home button, which is very crucial. This is the only unit that needs to be transferred onto the new digitizer. So we're gonna apply the frame glue remover on the edge. Then you can use a prying tool to start carefully lifting the screen. Also like make sure you wear um, uh, the contact glasses for protection, usually the one that we use for the back glass repair. Since there is a lot of damage for this, you want to protect your eyes. And by the way, if you're looking for any parts or tools, check out the links below. If you're interested in mail-in repair or advanced data recovery service, we offer all those services at techdeb.com. Okay, so as you feel the screen is coming off, you can start from this side, like holding it from this position. And technically the glass, all of it should come out, leaving just a few debris for cleanup. So go underneath the adhesive, so all the piece of the glasses should come off without staying stuck onto the frame. Okay, so once this portion is done, go from here, same thing from the top, make sure you go under the adhesive. And there you have it. So this is the section I was talking about for the Touch ID. But technically, if you follow the step correctly, you shouldn't have too much cleanup to do after like the digitizer comes off. Using a Phillips screws, we're gonna take out all four screws holding the LCD. Once all of those screws are out, there is a little bit of adhesive in this corner and this corner. Do not take out the LCD like from this side. Otherwise you might cause damage. Those are very fragile. So start your way from here. There you go. Now it should lift up without causing too much resistance. Okay, and the first thing you wanna do is to go and take out the screw holding the battery connector. Slightly push the board up to make sure there is no connection. So now the iPad is fully discharged, safe to continue the operation. And then we're gonna go take out the three Phillips screw holding the metal bracket covering the digitizer collection, uh, connections, as well as the LCD connection and the Touch ID home button. Using a plastic spudger, never use metal tools to disconnect connections. And I lift the metal bracket. 
First disconnect the connection of the LCD. There you go. That's out of the way. And moving on, we're gonna take care of the digitizer connection. And right here, there is a small kind of pad covering the connection of the Touch ID. So you carefully wanna peel it off. Okay, so now we can safely remove the digitizer. So as you can see, because we used the appropriate tools, now we just have like a few things for cleanup, not being too time consuming, which is the idea for this type of repair. Then moving on, I recommend using like this tool that we use for the backlash iPhone repairs to make sure like we scrap off all form of adhesive. After finishing cleaning up the frame, you want to make sure like that dent is flat. So like you can just put your right thumb and left thumb right here and simply twist it. You want to make sure that it sits flat. Okay. So the way to make sure that it's perfectly flat, just put it in this position and make sure there is no open and closure anywhere. So it seems to be flat. So as long as it's right in this section, it's easier to like put it back to its original uh, form. But actually iPads, they have like this issue for like all past generation. They always have been that this infamous thing called bend gate. So just be cautious when you want to take an iPad for repair. Always examine the frame before like giving a quote for the digitizer. Moving on, we have to extract the Touch ID home button so it can be transferred onto the new digitizer. So start from this section right here. And it's recommended to have like the heating mat operating at like a low temperature. Don't put it too high. So there is like some debris stuck on the home button, no biggie. Just be careful in this section right here because it's only a flex ribbon cable, so you don't want to like cut it at all. Okay, so here's the home button and we're going to transfer it onto the new digitizer. Then apply the home button onto the new digitizer. So I would recommend to put a little bit of B7000 just around the corner of the home button to make sure like there is no jamming home button later on. Those are like very common problem that happens on iPad repair. So you want to make sure like the home button is reinforced with a good amount of B7000. Do not apply too much, otherwise you're going to interfere with the touch, like the clicking functionality. So just like around this corner and here should be good enough. So we're going to start the reassembly. First thing you want to do is to reconnect the home button. And we're going to reconnect the digitizer. Then we're going to apply the connections for the digitizer. Then moving on, we're going to install the LCD. After all the three connections are secure, we're going to put back the metal bracket holding the three Phillips screws. Then put back the 
screw for holding the battery. Now we're gonna put the last four screws holding the LCD. And by the way, guys, if you are looking for any parts or tools that you saw in this video, all the links are below in the description. Make sure that there is no dust sitting on the LCD. The last step is to remove the protective film from the inside of the screen. It's best to like use um, a blower as you're closing to make sure that no dust, almost no dust stays within the screen and the LCD. Okay. So we want to make sure that the screen is super flat from all corners, especially this corner because this is the weaker corner. All right, so let's power up this guy and make a quick test. Okay. Home button works, touch works. And this will be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And with the help of the community, we'll make sure to provide more contents in the near future. Again, if you saw any parts or tools you need in this video, check us out at techdat.com or click in the link below for mailing repairs or data recovery. Thank you guys for watching.